All right, beginner singers. My name is Adam Mishan. I'm a singer, songwriter, and vocal coach. And I assume because you clicked on this video that you want to learn how to sing better right now. So let's talk a little bit about it. Run, run, lost boy, they say to me. One thing that a lot of singers don't realize, or people that are starting to learn how to sing, is that much of learning how to sing isn't learning a brand new skill. Let's take that this as an example. If you're playing piano, right, you sit down at the piano and you start playing, that is the first time that you're ever going to have played piano. As opposed to when you start singing, you're using an instrument that you've used since day one. Since the moment you were born, you've been using your voice for that initial cry and many, many times since then through speech and through yelling and through all the rest that we use our voice for. So while for many of you it may seem like learning to sing is a brand new skill, it actually is not. You're using something that you've used for years. A much better way to look at it is to look at learning how to sing as learning how to undo the bad habits that you've built up through your life. Now there's many reasons why you might have bad habits. You might strain, you might push for higher notes, you might sing in a specific way that actually holds you back from being able to project your voice. So you might be like in this type of quality. And all these possibilities all come from the way we grow up, the way that we learn our social norms, and through our families find out what is acceptable, what is unacceptable. You know, even just a comment like, don't make that sound, could very easily shut down somebody from making a sound that could potentially be very good for their voice. And so rather they learn a bad habit from that. The next thing you need to realize if you want to get better at singing is that it's a skill like any other in that it can be improved. It's not something that you're either born with or you're not, because if you hold that mindset, you're going to be stuck with what you have and never push to persevere and improve your instrument. The next thing you need to know about singing is that there's two things that add weight to the voice. And what I mean by that is literally like analogous to actually working out. These things add weight to the instrument and you don't want to add weight until you've built up strength. So the two things that add weight are pitch. So higher pitches add more weight on the instrument. So if you've got your vocal cords right here, right? So they're inside your throat right here. Your Adam's apple, right behind your Adam's apple is where your vocal cords are. And so they vibrate. Now they also stretch. So at a certain point, once you get to a certain pitch, ah, they start to stretch. And so that stretching adds pressure and weight to the voice. So that stretching requires strength. The other thing that requires more strength and adds weight to the voice is volume. So volume plus pitch equals a lot more weight. So as you get louder, there's more air moving through the vocal cords and the vocal cords are forced to try to hold back that airflow. And by them trying to hold back that airflow, it requires more muscle and more strength. If you want to sing with more confidence and power, then you have to sign up for my lesson subscription. You get two group lessons with me personally every single week. You get access to all my courses and you get access to recordings of all my one-on-one -on -one lessons with my students. That will help you learn vicariously through them. Click the link down below to sign up now. So those are the two main things, pitch and volume, that add weight to the voice. Now, I want you to think of yourself as a beginner walking into a gym. Would you walk into a gym and pick up the 50 pound dumbbells and start doing your bicep curls? It wouldn't be a recommended way to go about it, right? Much better to start with five pounds, 10 pounds, get your form correct, get the coordination that you need correct. And then once you've got that coordination of the bicep curl, Curl. then you can start to add weight on top of this. So what I need you to do as a beginner singer is to imagine you're stepping into this gym for the very first time. And so I don't want you to be using too much volume or too much pitch, so too much, too high of a pitch to start your singing journey. Your singing journey needs to start at that lower volume level and the lower pitch levels, and then slowly thinking of increasing both of those to develop more strength into the vocal cords and the whole instrument altogether. So we're gonna start with one of my favorite vocal exercises. This is using a straw. 
singing through a straw can be extremely effective for getting the voice warmed up and putting pressure in the right places, sending back pressure against the vocal cords so that they vibrate more comfortably. Without all this subglottal pressure, all this pressure from below, you're getting an equalization of that pressure from above and below. And so you've got this straw. So if I want you guys to grab a straw and we're just going to do those two things. We're gonna stay with those two principles, low volume and low pitch. So what we're gonna do is just do some slides at a low volume, low pitch. Take a nice breath, low volume again. Good. And for females, you can be up a little bit higher, whatever's comfortable for you. And for you tenor males that are not following along with this pitch exactly, you can go to where it's comfortable for you. But we want to try to keep it with, and all the exercises we're going to be doing here, with that exact same process in mind of keeping it at a low volume, because we're assuming everybody here is a beginner, right? So we're doing a low volume and low pitches. So now let's try working through another exercise that I really like. This is a bub exercise. So we're going to use a B sound to really create an explosive kind of push off point. Imagine yourself being on a trampoline. So if you're trying to jump off the floor, you're not going to go very high. But if you jump on a trampoline, you get this this launch pad from the trampoline pushing you upwards. We want to get that same thing with the vocal cords on the B sound. So we're going to do low volume, low pitches. And notice how I use the B as a push off point. I go B. But there's not buh, buh, buh. it's not that that is totally different not actually going to give you a lot of benefit we want to be very explosive with that moment where we let go of the b so try to be very short with each one Another thing I want to point out is that I'm not allowing my larynx to rise and I'm thinking of the exact same vowel all the way through. Uh, 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 uh. And the way that I don't let my larynx rise is by putting a little dopey sound in it. Not that's going to raise the larynx. So we think dopey with it. Good. Now we're going to take this idea of pitch and try to extend it a little bit more. So we're going to add a little bit more weight to the voice using pitch, not volume. So we're not going to add volume. We're just going to add a little bit more pitch range to see how your voice holds up. So what we want to do is watch and monitor if our voice gets tight, gets strained, then don't push any further past that point. So we want to find that spot where our voice wants to break, wants to get tight, wants to squeeze in, and we try to stop at that point. So now we're going to do it on a mum. We're going to go mum, 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 mum. Still quiet. Mum, 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 mum. Mum, 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 mum. Mum, 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 mum. And I allow my voice to do what it wants to do. And I find that spot where it's just not going to want to cooperate anymore. And that's my, and I'll mark off where that is on the piano, right? Play that note and then try to see, can I get up higher next time? That's adding a little bit more weight to it every time we work out. Mum, 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 mum. Mum, 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 mum. So let's say on that one, if things were getting a little bit tight, then we can say that's our upper limit. Now we're going to drop back down. Mum, 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 mum. 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 Again, keeping it really quiet. Mum, 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 mum. Mum, 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 mum. Mum, 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 mum. 
Mum, 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 mum. So I want you to think of every time you work out, every time you do these exercises, I want you to do these on a daily basis. I want you to try to extend that range with that one. Now, I specifically did it on the third exercise because we want to try to allow our voice to warm up. So we could do it through the straw, warm up the voice a little bit, then the buzz, add a little bit of weight to that and without actually adding any more volume. And then the mums kind of find this nice balance between the two and we can try to extend that range. So play with that. And then your goal is once you're able to hit every single note in your range comfortably at that low volume, then you can start to increase the volume step by step, little by little, just the way you would increase weight in the gym. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, check out that one right there. You're going to like it. Click on it.